So, um, I I like Steve Harvey. Sometimes I usually like him on Family Feud. Uh, but, you know, when you subscribe to one thing, Steve Harvey, you get all things Steve Harvey. Uh, and this clip came across. Um, and, and the title was, Am I Scaring Men Away? And, I mean, I run this channel, right? So, things relationship-wise uh, tend to interest me. So, I watched it. And I want you guys to see this because this is a beautiful mastering of, uh, uh, Steve is just an absolute master uh, at how he handles this interaction. So I'm gonna show you guys how she introduces herself. And I want y'all to think about when do you notice the first red flag? Okay, so there's a red flag in here, maybe more than one. Uh, see if you can find it. Hey, Steve. Hey, Michelle. I'm 35, never been married, no kids, and I'm waiting on my person. Uh -huh. I've never online dated, hinged, tindered, bumbled, mingled, and don't plan to because I just don't have the time. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, I have high expectations for myself, and I will have them for that man that comes alongside me and wants to run this life race. Admittedly, I am quite independent and an alpha female, but not like the ball breaking domineering type. I'm a woman of service, I love people, and I get spread quite thin and go all kinds of directions in my city. But I just need that man who can literally just be there right alongside me. So Steve, do you think my independent alpha female mentality comes off too strong? Did you catch it? Well, there's there's a number of red flags, but uh, I, I think probably the biggest red flag is is if you're here on this channel watching it, you've probably heard spiels like this from a lot of people who are very close to you or have been close to you, where they they paint themselves in all these positive lights, uh, and then they go through this list of of things that they are not, or at least they say that they're not, but really they are, right? Uh, so she, for example, she says. I'm the alpha female type, but not the overly domineering, controlling type, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, no you are, because that, that's absolutely uh, uh, ensconced in your definition of an alpha female. Uh, other red flags are, I've never tendered, bumbled, blah, 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 because I just don't have time. Well, if you don't have time to look uh, for relationships, uh, that's, that's a problem, right? And then you wonder why you're having problems with relationships. And she says she's always busy. Well, if you don't make time for other people, they're not gonna wanna be part of your life and your system, right? So, and everything that she said was very self-centric. I, 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 I want this, I want that, I need this, I need that, right? Uh, so yeah, very clearly r right around, you know, it's, it's obvious from the very beginning, her world revolves around her, right? So she is the sun and everyone and everything else is a planet. Now, keep listening. Listen to how Steve uh, responds to this. Well, let me ask you a couple questions. Have you been in long-term relationships? I have. I've been in three, and all, were... all less than about a year and a half, and okay. I call it off actually a wedding as well. And the guys were? Incredible, just not the ones I want to spend my life with, like life responsibility really? issues. You, an alpha woman, extremely independent, but you want a man that's more alpha male than you are, and you want to know if he's out there. Did you catch what Steve did? So anyone who watches this who knows about red flags can immediately identify what the problems are, right? He didn't do any of that. So he kept it completely and totally off of her because remember, she's the sun, all she sees are planets. So he's, saying, he's, he's, he's framing it in the form of the planets. So let me get this straight. And, and, and what, he, what he's done is he's framed the, the, the classic alpha male, beta male uh, ideologies uh, and combined them because there's a common phrase, there's only two types of men and one man can never be both types, right? Women want their alphas at a certain time and they want a beta, they want men that can wear both hats. They can be the alpha male when it suits them. They can be the beta male whenever it suits them. Unfortunately, men really just aren't, they, we don't have that kind of programming. And so that's exactly what he's done is he's taken the traits of uh, the, the stereotypical alpha male traits, the stereotypical beta male traits and put them together and said, so let me get this straight. 
you're looking for a man with all of these things. And now listen to what she says. Well, yeah, like the faith-filled, you know, I need like a Scotty Pippen to my MJ. And right there is where the mask comes off in an ever so subtle way. I need a Scotty Pippen to my MJ. I'm the sun and I need the planets that I want when I want orbiting the way that I want them to, right? I'm the Michael Jordan, the best that's ever lived. And I want the second best to be my alpha, right? So now listen, listen. Like I'm MJ, you know, like Michael Jordan and I need that Scotty Pippen that's gonna toss that. me the ball. Like come alongside me. Like a teammate. No, ain't no man finna do that. You Michael Jordan, I'm finna be your Scott. <laughs> what, 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 yeah. what strong, independent, mo alpha male you done met that's finna be the Scotty and let you be the Michael Jordan? Well, Notice she immediately starts interrupting him, right? You, you kind of heard it leading into the right before I, I, I cut, right? So she's interrupting him because uh, now watch, she's gonna offer the correction. And I love Steve the way he does this because he lets her offer the correction, which is very common with, with, with uh, cluster B people and, and manipulators. She's gonna reframe it, right? So she let it slip. She let her mask slip for a second. Now she's gonna come back and try and correct and gaslight and, and do all of these things. And he's just gonna sit there quietly, let her do it. And then he calls her right back out on it. So check this out. I mean, I can be the Scotty, the Rodman, but I mean, is the Michael Jordan out there? That's yeah, then the yeah, question. Yeah, out there. You think so? But, but let me say this though. Mm -hmm. I don't think the problem is, you've had three long-term relationships from three great guys. Most people can't say that. Right. I think it's you. Okay. Okay, so I have, when I say I have high expectations, they're from like here to heaven. So I wake up, read devotion, read Bible. I have a master's degree. Yeah. Then I have a small volunteer ran nonprofit, like strictly volunteer ran yeah. nonprofit. So I'm quite busy and a principal of a middle school. Okay. So quite busy. Yeah. So like, I, and I, but I can make time for a man. Oh. I mean, I cook, I will go out, get dolled up. Okay. I can do all that. Okay. But I just need someone that can support me in all the endeavors you inadvertently said you want your scotty to your which is really what you meant yeah. but you had to fix it after the, the crowd after went. we talked Ooh, uh, yeah. so so you had to adjust it and you said well i'll be the rodman but not really though You're right. uh, in in that that last segment steve used a, a very good construct for offering criticism notice how he said you already said that you had three good relationships with three good men. Not a lot of people can say that, right? So he set that up so that she has something to be proud of before he brings her back down uh, to confronting the uncomfortable reality. When he says, I think it's you, right? Because if he had just said that, she would immediately block that and deflect that, right? So he gotta, he's gotta get under that mask a little bit got to get her to, to understand and recognize, you know, stroke her ego a little bit and, and then say, I think it's you, right? And then notice, I, like I said before, he calls her out. You inadvertently said, I'm, I'm Michael Jordan and I need a, a Scottie Pippen to my Jordan. And then you tried to, to correct it once the crowd reacted, but that's really what you meant. And then she's uncomfortably, yeah, yeah, right? And, and so now listen as, as she continues, as this continues on. And there's nothing wrong with you having what you have, doing what you do, and wanting what you want. I never ask a woman to dumb it down. If you have a high expectations of yourself and your life, you should go and do it and don't stop what you're doing just for a man. And see, this is, this is genius because anyone who's listening uh, has picked up on and recognized the fact that she's so busy that she, she does not have a relationship because she doesn't prioritize a relationship in her life. She prioritizes responsibilities, things, titles, image, status. I have a nonprofit that is strictly volunteering. So not only is it a nonprofit, but it's a nonprofit that is strictly volunteering. So it's the end all of end all of nonprofits. Plus she's a middle school, uh, uh, what is it, principal. Uh, and she wakes up, she's got her morning devotionals to God, right? So all about 
her looking good. I do all of these things, right? And so here he's saying, you know, and it is good relationship advice. Don't stop what you're doing just for a man, right? So that's good. Again, build up before you bring down, right? Build up, bring down, build up, bring down. And Steve is really, really good at that. Now listen, he's going to bring her down right here just a little bit. You understand? Mm -hmm. But now understand this now. What man has to come along and be willing to fit into your system? And so now watch this. This is very much uh, uh, speaking to the planet's uh, kind of strategy where he's framing it in the terms of the faults men have instead of her, right? So listen to what he says right here. That's hard to find. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because see, we got we come with issues. And if we can't be the man, what makes us a man? I, it, it's just real simple with me and ladies. You gotta stroke that ego. And I, I appreciate you having high standards. Tell. Did you catch that? Watch again. You gotta stroke that ego. And I, I appreciate you having high standards. You got to stroke that ego, and I can appreciate you having high standards, right? So he's telling her, you got to stroke a man's ego, and then he immediately turns around and strokes her ego too, right? Tell me the type of man you're looking for. Just tell me what that is. Who is this right here? This is my incredible mother. She's heard this before. Well, she and, and she wants grandkids. Yeah. Like yesterday y yesterday but i keep telling her to ask my brother that was that was a big one did you catch that she keeps asking me for grandkids and i keep telling her you need to ask my brother right as as a woman i think that's uh that's a much bigger deal than like say you know like a, a son saying that about his sister like I, don't look at me look at sister right don't look to me for grandkids look to my brother right so that's kind of sort of a self-acknowledgement that family's not a priority for her. Relationships are not a thing for her. Uh, and she's diverting it to her brother, but in a sort of playful way. But deeper under the surface, there's more to, there's more to it than that. Either she's harboring uh, self-awareness that relationships are not her thing, or that it's just not a priority, or maybe she's completely blind to it and just relationships keep failing on their own. And she has no idea why, because she's blind to it. But now listen to, to what comes up with all, all of these qualities and listen good because these are not actual traits of a person. These are convenient things that she benefits from. And this is very common uh, in the, the world of narcissism where you, you say, okay, describe your ideal partner. And they list off a list of things that they want to benefit from. In other words, supply, right? So this is a, a grocery list of supply uh, and not actual personality traits so listen closely so um <laughs> let's get let's get back to those qualities yeah um so i like what you said everything that i no tell am, me no 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 well, i want to hear what you are okay. <laughs> i want you to tell me what okay. you want in a man all right faith-filled god first okay smart and witty so can hold a good conversation okay adventurous likes to travel mm-hmm Family first, is secure with himself, doesn't have to have a lot of money, just secure and willing to support their teammate. That's truly what I've, have I missed anything, mom? Yeah. Oh, about 20 things. Mm. Yeah, you've missed, I don't, I, don't, I still haven't heard the hmm. type of man you want. Oh, you want but, like a, like the, even the physical characteristics? No, I want the type of man you want. A male type is you want a man who is this way, this way, does this, feels this, thinks that. That's a type. Mm. Maybe we're having trouble with finding it because you don't know exactly what it is. And now see, she started off with some of the very, very common things that women say that they're looking for in a man, you know. Uh, devoted to God, you know, witty, funny, uh, all these other things. And then you get into things that like, like to travel, uh, and devoted to family. Well, I mean, liking to travel requires money and that's something that she benefits from, right? So she's not talking about, I want a man to accompany me on my personal travels. No, she wants a man that, that already has that, that has the means to do that, to come in and, and swoop her out of her 
busy schedule. Well, when is she ever going to have time to travel when she has all of these things in this busy lifestyle? That's a contradiction. So her list of attributes uh, doesn't make a lot of sense. But from the narcissistic female standpoint, they're all things that it's the, the, eye, the man that's eye candy, right? So the things that other people would notice. Other people would notice that he's devoted to God, same as her. Other people would notice that he's witty and funny, right? Other people would notice her travel pictures going on vacations with what, uh, with the, the vacation money that, that he provides. Oh, but also be dedicated to his family when even she is not dedicated enough to the concept of family that she has gone through three good relationships by her own standards and even walked away from one of her own weddings. So she is a walking contradiction. And whenever you break it down objectively, you can see that contradiction. But again, when you just hear that list of attributes, we've all said stuff like that. We've all heard stuff like that. Um, and it's fine because it sounds great. But then when you dig into it objectively and you look at who it is that is saying that in their lifestyle, you can, you can see that what she's listing off is really just self-serving attributes. It has nothing to do with the type of person or the type of man or anything that defines a man as a person, right? These are just all the things that sound good, that look good, that look great on Instagram, right? Uh, and Steve rightly calls her out on that. Um, and like I said, it's all things that we, we've all said and all heard and all thought. Um, and, and Steve calls it out in such a, a nice, uh, delicate way. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, let's keep watching. Heard. Received. And, and let me tell you something. And you all that in a bag of chips. You everything. You got Salsa, great personality. Salsa, queso. Salsa, queso. Guacamole. But feeding her ego like she's trying to reinflate herself because that was just a big hit that she took Boop, pop the ego the, the, the ego deflating she's trying to reinflate herself bag of chips guacamole salsa whatever what no uh, but, but i mean that's what's behind it do a lot don't i know <laughs> you are you a lie. i just found that out just talking to you you just a lie and you and i love that because that is such a, a a great neutral criticism that's open to interpretation. You are a lot. What does that even mean? Ob objectively, it doesn't mean anything, but it's, it, it allows her the, the freedom to acknowledge and recognize uh, that, that she has issues. They're, they're very clear and obvious, but he's not gonna openly criticize it. But he says, you're a lot. I found that out just talking to you. You are a lot. Right, so that's that's a really great criticism. I'm adding that to my bag of tricks, uh, and you should as well because I think that's an excellent, excellent neutral criticism to to, to leverage uh, when you're dealing with difficult people. And you lot, but you'd have had three men that are locked in on that lot, but then what you kept wanting from them, they didn't live up to it. And I wanted to live out my dream too. So not, and you want to live out your dream. And I did. So and, now I'm 35. And and now watch this, are you ready for it? This is where he get, breaks through to her and gets through that mask and gets through that narcissism uh, and hits her straight in the, the whatever. But see, you can't drag Single. everybody with you on your dream that don't want to go. So if, if I want to help you, lady, because you seem like you really <laughs> want this answer, if I just knew what you wanted, if you knew what you wanted, you feel me? Yeah, I do. I'm crying because I'm, I got it. Connected, I get it. You can't drag everybody on your dream that doesn't want to go. Uh, and again, that is another very excellent criticism for, for uh, people on the, the cluster B spectrum, right? Because then it's an excellent way of framing that your life is all about you uh, and not other people and that you're being inconsiderate without actually saying it. So it's your dream, but you can't drag people along on that, right? Because the other way to frame it is, is that all you care about is you and you are being selfish and you don't think about other people, right? But in their mind, in, in the narcissistic mind, like I said, they're chasing 
the things that look at they're chasing their dream whatever they've decided that is it's a it's a coping mechanism it's a deep it's oftentimes not always but oftentimes a coping mechanism and a defense mechanism where if i do all the things well then finally somebody will acknowledge me finally people will will see the value in me that i have to offer right um you know it's a classic um uh, good student, the, the, the valedictorian, the, the one who gets all the good grades, uh, the, the, the fat kid who becomes a bodybuilder and becomes a, a male model, um, somebody who starts from nothing and has a, 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 a poor self-image and they do all the things uh, that they think is going to correct and fix that self-image, but they don't actually work on themselves, right? Um, but now listen to what Harvey says next. Uh, this is really, really good. See, you're a sweet person. So here's, let me tell you what you got going for you. I think your personality is top flight. Seem like a fun person. You seem sweet. You're not nasty or evil. You got a beautiful personality. You're pretty. You're a nice looking lady. You take care of yourself. And you seem to be so far to have made yourself happy. Now, all we need is for you to be willing to do for someone else the same thing that you expect them for do to do for you. Instead of trying to find the person that fits this, you got to find out where you fit to. I think if you do that, that's it. Thanks, Steve. And everything he just said, like I said, build them up and then bring them down, right? Say so stroke, 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 stroke the ego, right? Uh, and then what? It, it, what he said sounded great, but literally translates to you need to stop using people and start caring about people. That's what lies beneath that surface. And he presents all of these criticisms with such a flawless veneer uh, that he's actually able to openly criticize this woman on live television and she doesn't even realize it. Why? Because their criticisms lever leveraged uh, with the intention of solving a particular problem. Uh, and he's done it in such a way that strokes her ego, that makes her feel good, where the criticisms are not internalized in a negative way uh, and actually gets through to her, at least in that moment. Now, do I think that this is going to fix her problems? No, I, th I think uh, I think she's heard what she needs to hear. And then I think that she's gonna fall flat on her face trying to implement it because she's 35. And if she's this way at 35, she's gonna be this way at 45 and 55 and all the fives. Um, I, you know, it's like I say, it's very, very difficult for us to change ourselves, right? Very difficult for us to change ourselves let alone changing uh, somebody else, right? Uh, you know, she's made it to 35 without prioritizing family, making a family, building a family, and having a relationship. Uh, and it's not that she didn't have an opportunity. She had three opportunities. Uh, and none of those relationships work or worked out. And let's be honest, she, she did, uh, the, the likelihood that she is the one that, that ended all three of those long-term relationships uh, voluntarily uh, is probably not accurate, um, right? So, uh, yeah, uh, my, my guess is, is there's something else uh, underneath the surface because you don't, like you said early on in the beginning, not a lot of people can say that. That cuts two ways, right? So it sounded in the beginning, it sounded like it was a compliment, right? You don't, you don't went out there and you found three really good men. What women, what, what woman could say that except for a highly desirable, wonderful woman such as yourself, where you've had three men, uh, you know, willing to to go the distance with you, but at the same time, who's the common denominator, right? She, she is in, in one way or another maybe she's got poor taste in men maybe those men had poor taste in her but regardless she's the common denominator 
she had three opportunities to have the thing that she's looking for, uh, and it did not happen for her. Uh, and this this advice is not going to fix her life. Uh, it is she's ultimately going to. Uh, and like I said, this is just opinion. Uh, we know that narcissism is very difficult to treat uh, and very difficult to get therapy for because the person literally doesn't know that there's something wrong because they're doing all the right things that they decided are the correct things. And so if they're doing everything right according to their belief system, it's very difficult to convince them uh, that, that they're wrong, right? It's like trying to convince a Christian that there is no God or trying to convince an atheist that there is a God. Uh, it is literally that difficult to uh, help a narcissist or help somebody uh, with, with these problems. It has to be a self-admission that whatever I'm doing, my system is not working and I need to find out why. And so if, if they believe that their system is working, you can't help them. Um, even if they think their system is not working, they're looking for an external uh, source of sabotage. My system's not working, somebody must be sabotaging it. Um, so, but anyways, I, I'm gonna wrap, wrap this up. Um, I just, I recognized red flags immediately. Um, his technique was just masterful. Uh, I'm, I'm in awe. Uh, I wish I were that good. I'm not, because uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not really good at, at political speech like that. But in any case, uh, do please sound off in the comments. I always love to hear from you guys, see what you think, and I'll see y'all on the next video.